I am referring to and explaining always the way in which we can awaken to the truth or the ultimate reality through reading. For example, William Shakespeare's works or uh, Hollywood blockbusters and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, it's not difficult, but I see when I teach not only undergraduate students, but uh, master's degree students or doctoral degree students that they don't understand immediately, of course not, but as they become too accustomed to what I'm saying, they gradually understand what I'm saying. And uh, I think this is very basic and not only the basic or foundational, but very easy, I would say, way of understanding humanity and understanding the core of Buddhism and the core of also Christianity and also Islam religion. This time, I would like to talk about who am I issue. Who am I or what am I is the basic issue for every one of us. You would be struck by an idea that how can I define myself and how can I identify myself and what I like and dislike and so on so that you can say I become to know myself more and more, or at least about myself more and more. But it's not like that, um, I'd like to say, because it is the thematic approach at the end of the day. The thematic approach means we approach some um, main idea or the most important idea or this uh, uh, ideology, for example, in one literary work or a film. But the fact is that the truth lies beyond that, beyond that phenomenon of what you like or what you dislike. And for example, uh, I was talking about Hamlet. Now, Hamlet at the end of the play, Hamlet, as well as the bad guy Claudius dies. So um, they both die and his mother dies and the palace is almost conquered. So nothing happens, nothing pleases you. But after all, um, for so many centuries, that work done by William Shakespeare has been considered as one of the most important literary works over the whole world. It's not because English literature has uh, such a political influence or something like that, but it's, it itself, the work itself has really the mood and the language effect on everybody's mind. Of course, in this diagram, you would like to pose it yourself here, not here on the lower side, but on the upper side. And that means easily you come to uh, look down upon the other. Or here, if you have the inferiority, then you would feel like jealousy 
or um, something like that, or um, being guilty or so, anything like that. Now, let's go back to this. Uh, this is actually the national flag of South Korea. You can say there are uh, situations like this, of course, you can say that, but this and this parallel like this is very rare. And it's not only very rare, but fundamentally, most basically, it's impossible over and beyond the phenomenon. In other words, the truth, what I'm saying is that the truth, it, truth is or truth lies beyond phenomena, uh, which consists of the intellectuality or intelligibility of what is good and what is evil or what is right and what is wrong. So let's go back to this. Here, we confirm this either one of this. Or you can say you always put yourself here so that placed here, you think you're uh, inferior to others or in a very si similar situation. In fact, that's not a very good way of finding the truth because it's like uh, the questions and answers that we are used to do in high school days. Like um, saying um, the question, I mean, what is the right answer? Choose one out of five or out of four uh, after reading the next paragraph. And then we choose. It's not like that. It's, in other words, there is no theme when you read a literary masterpiece or when you watch a very great, uh, very good Hollywood blockbuster, there is no thematic approach you have to observe. You have to go beyond this sound, for example, so that you can know or you can realize both the, the sound and none of the sound, non-duality. This or this, or not this or this, but this and this at the same time, or not this, not this either, neither nor. We find this kind of situation in tragedy, as I referred to Hamlet. Hamlet and Jekyll and Hyde and Tess of the Durbervilles, everybody dies. I mean, it's uh, all the literary works, literary masterpieces are like that. It seems like we would really enjoy the happy ending, but it's not. Happy ending doesn't come when the work is serious about life and uh, wants to give you or the reveal the truth of, of life. That is the feeling that has both pain and pleasure at the same time. That's what we feel not really intellectually think about, but feel rather after the end of Hamnet or after the end of Jekyll and Hyde. Combining or the unity of pain and pleasure. Then it's like what Aristotle already said 2000 years ago when he said the purification of the mind. So in order to have that entering into the purification of the mind for your life, 
you have to really deconstruct uh, to say the words that is popular in literary criticism, deconstruct or destroy the structure of this and that at the same time so that we can have the uh, joint, the unity of pain and pleasure at the same time. Then we find really uh, the most plain and most basic and the most uh, whatever, I mean, easiest way of ourselves being directed to the truth. And the text works like the finger that points to the moon. That happens in Hamlet and Jekyll and Hyde and also uh, Hollywood blockbusters like Joker. Thank you very much. I'll see you next in the next video.